Hey everybody, hey Cardware here, and in this video we are going to go over how to install the Friendly Elect Debian Bookworm Core onto the eMMC of the CM3588 using a micro SD card. So I actually prefer the Debian Bookworm Core image from Friendly Elect uh, mainly because it doesn't have a GUI. So if you're looking for an environment that has a uh, like a graphical user interface or a desktop environment, you can check out uh, Debian Bullseye, which is Debian 11, so you're kind of like one version back. Uh, there's a minimal and then there's a non-minimal, I think it's just like, uh, just says desktop or something. That's gonna have a bunch of recommended packages already installed if you don't get the minimal. I always prefer the minimal. And then there's an Ubuntu desktop there's a minimal and then a regular one as well for that. And uh, I do have some guides here. Uh, the minimal one here, I don't know why these old links are still showing up. Uh, this install FE Debian and install FE Ubuntu, hopefully these go away. Uh, their previous uh, installation wikis that I created and they were replaced with more specific ones. So we're on the bookworm core, but there's also bullseye minimal. Uh, but yeah, if you just need the command line interface, this is great. Uh, I usually use the CM3588 for uh, just like running Docker and I'll install Docker on it and then I'll open that up in uh, like Portainer or something and manage everything through Portainer. So it kind of just depends and I'll usually SSH into it if I need to. Again, a different video might work better for you if you're looking for a desktop environment. Prerequisites, of course, you need a CM3588, you need a micro SD card. I recommend at least 16 gigabytes. And then you need a card reader, whether that's like built into your laptop or computer, or you have like a USB adapter. Um, and then of course the OS image. So as far as OS image goes, it's pretty easy. You just go over to the friendly electric I'm just gonna say friendly electric instead of friendly elect because it just feels weird uh, to say it that way. And you'll just click this download link button and then you're gonna click Google Drive. And then, let me just make this a little bit larger here. We'll go to official images. And because we're doing SD to EMMC, we're gonna grab those images. And then you should look for bookworm core 6.1. There's only one uh, bookworm, you have the bullseye desktop and minimal. And then of course, uh, I have videos on, or I will have videos on Proxmox. Uh, if you, by default, typically they already have Open Media Vault installed on the eMMC, but if you need to reinstall, I have a video for that as well. And then I'm gonna eventually do an Armbian uh, version here of this video. So lots of videos coming, but anyways, what we need to do is download this one, which is up here. You can just right click and then click download. I've already downloaded them, so I don't need uh, to download it again. So we'll jump back here. We just went through all of these and then you're gonna flash the image. So I have two guides here. If you're on Ubuntu, you can use this one. If you're on Windows, you can use this one. And this is gonna be basically flashing the image that you download onto the micro SD card. So pretty straightforward. Follow these guides, there's videos for it pretty straightforward. And at that point, once you're back from those videos, we're gonna be on this step, which is flash the eMMC. So go check out those and then come back. Uh, one note, if you're going to be using the HDMI port for the CM3588, you, if you just need one, I say use the middle port. I don't remember if it's the left or the right port that's also an output, but one of the ports is an input and the middle port, since there's three of them, it's super simple. Use the middle port, you'll get an HDMI out. Uh, I know some people have mentioned on some of my videos before they couldn't get the video working. It's likely they were using the input and not the output. So you don't have three HDMI outputs. You have one input, two outputs. Middle one is always gonna be an output, super easy. Um, one cool thing about the eFlasher images that Friendly Electric offers is that they will automatically flash the eMMC. You just have to put the micro SD card into the micro SD card slot, turn on the uh, CM3588, and it's automatically going to detect the micro SD card and flash. And you'll see like a progress bar. 
I don't even hook a monitor up to mine anymore when I flash them. I just wait like a minute to two minutes and then just turn it off and then make sure you remove the SD card because if you turn it off and then turn it back on with the micro SD card in, it's just going to reflash the EMMC and it's probably going to put a little wear on your, it's probably not the worst thing, but um, yeah, there's no point reflashing it if you don't need to. So yeah, make sure you take off that uh, card or take the card out before you boot it back up to actually get into it. And then for the first boot, so I like to, as I mentioned before, SSH into uh, my CM3588. And to do that, you need to find the IP address. And you should be able to just go into your router. Like I have a Unify router and just look for the entry for the CM3588 and then find the IP address. So here's an example on my Dream Machine Pro CM3588, and then I've got the IP address here, and then you can just SSH into it. If you want, you can use just the, your terminal. So this, of course, assumes you have uh, Linux. If you don't have Linux, honestly, I recommend just using Termius. It's a free. It's I think it's free. There's a free version basically, but. It allows you to just manage all of your uh, SSH, like different hosts and stuff. So definitely I, I recommend using that. And that's actually what we're going to use for this video. So let's actually bring it up and we will uh, SSH into it. So this is the one I've been using for my CM3588s. I'll click the little edit button. I'm going to paste in the new IP address. So you just put the IP address that you find for your CM3588. And then down here, the login is going to be uh, root, and then the password is going to be FA. You should be able to hit connect. You'll hit add and continue to add it to the known hosts. And then that's it. We are in our instance of uh, this uh, for, yeah, we're on Debian, Debian Bookworm. There's so many different versions. The first thing I like to do, because FA is a terrible password, is just to pass WD and that'll let you change the root password. So super quick, super easy. Um, now there shouldn't be any uh, processes for, so when Friendly Electric, when they create the, this uh, image, they have a user Pi. And I always like to delete the Pi user because I just have no need for it. I always create my own. So you can do p kill dash u pi. There's likely no processes, but that will kill all the processes for pi. And then you can do uh, delete user dash dash remove home pi. And that'll delete basically everything for the pi user. And then you can create your own user. So mine are always hey hardware. Uh, don't put a space. Muscle memory sometimes is a pain. Okay, so it's gonna create automatically uh, that user, it should be user ID 1000 because we deleted the Pi user and it's going to create a home directory and then we'll just put in our password here. And then you can just hit enter past all this and then enter again for yes. So now we have our user set up, but we want to add it to the pseudo group so that we don't have to use the root user anymore. So we can do user mod dash a G for add group, sudo, and then your username. And then what we're gonna do is just hit exit. And then I'm gonna log in with my Hake Hardware user. So we can remove these. And I actually have saved uh, passwords here, which is another cool feature of Termius. And I'll just click connect. And now we're logged in as Hake Hardware. So, Let's get to the next step here. Okay, so I always like to turn off the ability for the root user to SSH in. So sudo nano etc ssh sshd config. And we're gonna go down to where it says permit root login. And we are going to comment that out. And I still, just because I'm, I don't know, I don't need to, I just put no here. Control X, Y, and then enter to save. And now uh, 
the root user cannot log in over SSH. We'll just restart SSH here. All right, another thing is by default, we cat out the Etsy apt sources.list. This is not like the standard, it's a mirror. Um, I'm sure it's probably fine. I don't know what Aliyun is, but I prefer to just use the default ones that come with Debian uh, 12 bookworm. So what we can do is just, I'm gonna copy this here and we're just gonna set a backup. I'm actually gonna do back for that. So sudo move is basically just like renaming sources.list to sources.list.bak. And then we'll create a new one by opening up uh, sources.list, which is we're basically creating this file. It doesn't exist. As you can see, new file because we just renamed the old one. And I'm going to copy these. These are just the uh, Debian.org ones, which in my opinion, they're going to be typically faster for you. And then I'll do control X, Y, enter to save. And then we'll just do a system update. So it's a good idea to wait to do the updates until you have the official sources in there and just let it run through the updates. And there could be quite a few depending on uh, when the latest image was created. I've noticed that uh, Friendly Electric, they have new images up fairly often. So it's really nice of them to keep those really updated so we don't have to do a bunch of different updates. Uh, you're probably going to get this prompt about um, using the package maintainers version. So you know how recent we just went into our SSHD config to make it so the root user cannot log in over SSH. When we install these updates and we install the package maintainers version of the updates, that basically will set that anyways. But I don't know why I just do both just to make sure. So this is what I'm talking about here. If we install the package maintainers version, which I like to do because it's just all the defaults, which are typically the most secure, that's going to actually set the permit root login to no anyways. So that other stuff was kind of not needed, but just in case for some reason you select the wrong thing or something, now we know for sure either way, we're just gonna click okay. And then we'll finish up those updates. Okay. Uh, now that we have the new sources, we can install, these are just things that I like, HTOP, um, it's help, helpful for viewing like CPU usage, memory usage, processes that are happening, uh, IFTOP, that's basically same thing but for network interfaces, NMAP's good for like scanning and doing auditing and just checking things on your network, sometimes I use it just for diagnosing things, and then TMUX is like um, like a session manager for your terminal. So if you want to run something in the background and then exit out of SSH, because I do everything over SSH, if you close your SSH session and you have something running, it stops that. But if you use Tmux, it basically creates a session that's persistent, which is great. So uh, I like to just install all these because they're not uh, installed by default and it's just super easy to get everything installed. Uh, this next one is just going to remove any packages that were dependencies that aren't needed anymore. Um, and I know I'm, I'm talking about things in the background here. I'm trying to put them up in the top here so you can see them as I run them. So we'll just run sudo apt auto remove. Looks like nothing was needed. All right, the next thing. So CM3588 is the host name and for a lot of people that's fine sometimes I have three or four of these running on my network and I don't want them to each have the same host name so the first thing we'll do is go to let me just bring it up a little bit higher here we'll do sudo nano etsy hosts and we're going to go in here and we're just going to change this I like to call them comets I don't know why it's just a thing uh, that I've started calling them and then we're going to edit the host name. So sudo nano Etsy host name and just delete out CM3588 and put in whatever you want. It doesn't have to be Comet. That's just what I like to call them. I'll do like Comet1, Comet2, Comet3, things like that. And then if you want the host name to show immediately, um, well, you can just do 
it's a good idea to reboot at this point. So we're going to do a little bit of a reboot here. And then by default, the time zones are set to local, or not local, UTC, and we want to set them to local. So if you're not sure what time zone to use, I love how fast these reboot, so quick. Uh, if you're not sure, you can do sudo time date ctl list time zones, and that'll give you all the options to choose from. You can use page down to go through them. So if you're not sure, for me, it's like America Phoenix. So uh, right here. So I know that that's what I need to put. And you can press Q to exit out of that. And I'll clear that. And now we can actually set the time zone. So sudo time date CTL set time zone and I'll be America Phoenix. And now if I do time date CTL, I can see it actually has the correct local time. Before it would have said UTC for local time, which is not what we want. We should also configure the locales because if we do locale, uh, locale, this is this POSIX. We don't want that. We want actually like the US uh, UTF-8. So we can do the sudo dpackage reconfigure locales. I'm going to page down here to, oh, went one too far. Uh, pa, pa, there we go. So spacebar is how you select it. And then you can hit tab to go down to OK. And then you should go down to, whoops, I did the wrong one. I did Spain, US. OK. And we're going to select that. Oh, now both of them are selected. So, all right. Let's see, ENUS. There it is. I did ESUS. Okay, so yeah, just make sure you're doing the right one. Um, and that's typically a hint when you get to the screen if it's not the right one. We'll click OK. It's going to just configure these real quick. And then once we do locale now, oh, sorry, you need to exit and then go back in. That basically just re like loads everything. Do locale and now we have ENUS UTF-8. So do whichever one you want. And that's really it. At this point, everything is set up. Everything's updated. You've got good security settings. Um, and you can start playing around with it. So if you want to install like uh, Docker, or if you have anything else you want to do, you can use it just like a normal system. You can plug in a monitor and keyboard, and you can do everything through there. Uh, but again, if you're just using the CLI, like using the terminals, SSH is probably the best way to do it. That way you can copy and paste commands from other things. And it just makes everything a lot easier. So hopefully uh, this worked out for you. Uh, I'd love if you know anybody wants to leave some comments on how they're using these CM3588s. I've just been using them as like Docker hosts for uh, like a project that I was recently uh, a part of, Autonomous. I'm sure a lot of uh, people that have subscribed to me were part of that project because I did a lot of videos on it. Uh, but I'm curious what else people are using these for, and hopefully the video was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.